First one, cyber security. Second one, I would say RP. And third one, I would say artificial intelligence. So these are the three things which is definitely going to drive the different areas of the world, will we'll solve most of the problems, will we'll bring the easiness of business. But equally, we need to uh, train the manpower to adopt these things, make them utilize, and parallel make sure that they are secure. And You are watching CIO TV by Enterprise IT World, a production of Accent Info Media. Welcome, you're watching CIOTV.live. In the series of interviews, we try to understand the perspectives of CIOs and IT leaders on various technologies and their strategies. Please welcome on our show today, Mr. Sunil Kankal, CIO, Data Futurity Solutions. A warm welcome, Sunil. Welcome to the show. Thank you and very good evening to you. And it's really nice to get the opportunity to speak across you and also transfer my knowledge and experience to the customers or to the clients or to the visitors for your uh, CITV online. Thank you Hi. once again, Shitman. A little about Sunil. Sunil is an IT professional with 25 years uh, plus of exposure in IT infra ecosystem, well, data centers globally, network technologies and software re-engineering, and delivering omni-channel customer experiences to BFSI, FMCG, and healthcare verticals. So, uh, Sunil, there's been so much hue and cry about digital transformation recently, especially post the pandemic. What is your perspective on digital transformation, whether it's forced or it's voluntary? What do you feel? Digital transformation, when you're speaking, it's uh, uh, a need of today. Okay, the way we are undergoing through a uh, a different pandemic and the hybrid uh, scenario. In that case, uh, the digital process was, was really a need for the yesterday also, but the pandemic has taught to really speed up and gear up the operations as well as the business on the platform of digital transformation. Now, now when you talk about uh, digital, when it's a digital meaning, you're trying to incorporate your uh, ongoing process operations completely in, onto the digital platform, which is like get the data, okay, each and every activity recorded online so that it's of ease for the next level person to take it to the another next level and try to complete the process. So it includes from the starting of any business till the payments. So all are involved in, in included and as well as involved right from the customers to the in-house employees to the business strategy. And finally, till the closure of the business, which may be the closure of payments. So the challenging point comes endpoints, the beginning and the end. Right. So I'm sure there's a lot of scope for uh, digital transformation in many processes across businesses. Now, you have witnessed the digital transformation journey of several organizations in close quarters and have been instrumental in creating IT roadmaps and digital strategies. So the question is, where does one begin? Now, let's just forget about the pandemic for a time and think this is a normal, our world was a normal one. So is there a step-by-step -step approach where an organization moves and you know is on the brink of change, but this is a step-by-step -step procedure that they follow? Does it work like that? Uh, yes, it's a basically a dynamic, I would say. For the beginners, the, uh, the new companies, those who are onboarding, it's a step-by-step -step process, right? But for an enterprise or for uh, a semi-enterprise, 
for these companies, the main concern is that uh, the employees, they take care of the total business, right? And these employees, they're from the non-technical background because they know the process and mm -hmm. they need to complete the transactions. So when they're involved in completing the process, transaction, whatever comes in the process, this process, when you're trying to put into the digital platform, now think about the traditional, okay? You need to address all these things and get it across. So either you go by step-by-step -step approach, if it is a new business, new process, and if it is a ongoing process, then you need to look for the gaps, the mm -hmm. silos, the delays, and look, try to address the insecurity of the people because at the end of the day, the people are there, okay? Mm -hmm. Anything, even if you say in basic terms, the artificial intelligence and machine learning are coming into the picture. That is, on the other side, it's developing an insecurity in the minds of the employees and the workers. So it's basically what is to make them understand it's not an insecurity. It's an easing the process. So once you ease the process, you make them free not to leave the job, but to put their intelligence into the higher level. Let them do something more. So if you're seeing most of the news, data, data, data. What's data? It is, they say Some say data is a new oil. Some say data is a new normal. So everything is a data, whether it's a communication done in a verbal format or a written format or a digitized it's going to help you to make a right decision, okay? Mm. So, so, so what I'm trying to say, try to consider as the in a positive way, put their all the things into the digital platform. Let it get recorded. Nothing is going to happen. But when it get, gets recorded, try to monitor, observe. So when you do an observation, you will come to know how you are going to make an effective use of digitization or digital platform. So, so this, is, this is the way I would summarize that uh, if you want to go to step-by-step -step approach, you can start in, in terms of taking one task at the beginning at the, at the level, uh, put it into the test process, check it. If it's giving desired output, go to the next level. Check it, go to the next level. That way you will end the process and you will have a total digitized platform. Yes, the challenge will come, the cost issue, okay? As a new business, you will definitely have, may come across, uh, a challenge about whether you can spend the X cost or X 10 times X cost or what. So that's a different decision again. Hmm. So you need to find out, get the leaders in place so that you have a right amount of information which can guide you as well as put your complete process into the digital platform and make it as a digital. Yeah. All right. So Sunil, you said that find the gap and then find uh, a digital solution to that gap. Uh, in a business, there may be many multiple places where you're not having the optimum results. There may be many, many gaps. So you fill all gaps at one, at one go. How do you identify which is the first gap? If it is a step-by-step -step process, which is the first gap to fill? Something that is easy, something uh, that is a, you know, a cost center that you cut your cost quickly or something that is your revenue generator, something that will give you exponential revenue growth. What do you fix first if there are multiple uh, things to fix? Very good question. I'd like to address right from the employee levels, okay? Because with every transformation, the situation is different. The dynamics are different, okay? And the project will be different. So let me take one case where you're trying to put the data onto the digital platform and a gap is seen. What's the gap? The first gap we'll see is a resistance. Resistance from the person who doesn't want things to happen. So what happens is a training, transforming the, I'm like, uh, putting that particular right amount of knowledge to that person, removing his insecurity. And the moment you remove the insecurity, that person is going to start putting the data. Okay. Now, once you put the data, now you need to process. So what is the next? When is it the next? You go to stage one, input the data, and go to the next stage. And then again, you will see a new gap. So every gap will be different. It may not be always with the human being. It may be sometimes with the understanding. Like you try to communicate to the developer that you have this kind of a process, which is going to complete. This is the beginning and this is the end. Now, he understands and he develops this, the, the platform. He is going to create a complete software program. So when you try to test it, you will try to see that these things are not being properly aligned or not being able to deliver. So you have to be in a consistent communication with him that you take the uh, 
the software, test it, check it, see the test results, communicate back to him. So with that thing, if you are having a proper alignment with the vendor who is developing or with an inside uh, developer who is trying to do for it for you, you will see that this, the process will be smooth and it will go to the acceptance levels of all the people who are involved within the total process and it gets completed. So I've seen a lot of such transformation in my 25 to 28 years of journey where uh, the challenges what I've seen is about the communication, about the geographical challenges, about the resistance. So these are the, I would say on an 80-20 rules, 80% are the simpler challenges. 20% are a difficult challenges, which is quite different. That can be addressed without the uh, a set of people who are who are coordinating to the 80% of the completion. So Sunil, uh, you spoke about the challenges, and I, I'm sure you're referring to the ones where uh, uh, there's a resistance from those people who have been doing the mechanical work, and they feel as if threatened that you know their work can no longer be relevant. While uh, once the me mechanical work is automated, they can do many more things which include value addition. Uh, you've worked in all types of large companies. Now, uh, in, in our country, there are all kinds of companies. They're small companies, they're family-led companies, they're MNC companies. Now, um, how important it is in this day and age for the top management to be on board to bring about digital transformation? Because you also said one of the challenges is the cost, right? If your top management is on board and is willing to sink in the cost, does the transformation become easier? Of course, yes. They are also equally involved. You know, my, my strategy is somewhat a little different. In my previous uh, uh, case studies, whenever I handled, I have equally been very transparent to the stakeholders in the way that... Uh, over a period of time, I had seen that they are they are almost as a mini CIOs or a micro CIOs. They're equally as a CIOs. So what I did is why I, I was so transparent with the stakeholders. It's not because of some other factor, but the main factor is making a good team. Mm -hmm. When you have a good team and they have got a proper understanding, that is going to remove a lot of your problems. That will clear a lot of your uh, resistances. That will that will be always have a consideration to the thing stating that the solutions given by the leaders are giving business benefits. So I always try to make sure that the business benefits are transparently shown to them that has given me the good results in terms of getting the authorizations, in terms of getting the uh, proper coordinations. That's also equally important in terms of leading such kind of an activities. All right. Uh, you know, with the new uh, corona variant around the corner, especially the uh, Omicron, uh, how how do you see organizations preparing for hybrid work? Uh, because uh, do you think now it is not going to be an uphill task because, you know, uh, the shock is not there. They prepared for this uh, in uh, the last two years. How do you see preparedness and uh, business continuity because of this new variant coming? As far as the preparedness is concerned, I would say uh, what it requires is a change in the mindset. Okay, uh, I need to be equally flexible uh, in terms of uh, not showing off my seniority, but to uh, but to be with them with this current crisis. Why uh, the workforce? Okay, the workforce has already seen the challenges. They had seen. For example, the loss of relatives, okay? They had seen the situations to cope up with their health and mental stress. Some of them have already uh, changed their mindset because uh, they were lucky to get the good amount from the share markets, okay? The stock markets. So that has given some kind of a new level of an additional confidence within them to find out a new pattern of life. They, they they are ready to reaffirm their life path. So what I what I would like to say is that with this pandemic, we need to be ready for the hybrid workforce. We need to come out with a new normal. This new normal will definitely give new directions, new kind of a culture. The purpose is to get the business benefit. Not only the business benefit, to roll the business in such a way that it is successful. You need to make sure by not by using the traditional thoughts, but by using the current challenging way out. 
addressing that kind of way outs, getting the, the combination of the virtual workforce along with the, the workforce, which is trying to work in the mixed scenario. And another thing is those who are ready to work from the office. So these are the three different teams which are in different, different areas. And these three different teams, we cannot add a stress. We need to add an inspiration. So just by inspiration, by rewards, it may not happen. We need to empathize them. And that empathy is nothing but addressing their current challenges. Maybe once, twice, they will not perform, but they are going to perform because still yesterday they did, they were, they were performing when they were at office. They will also perform now. They're human beings. So when you address all these factors, I think the hybrid workforce with the new way of culture, new process, and with a combination of flexible hours of working, giving them the leniency, but also addressing them and giving them the targets, not to sit on their head and say, be calculative that disturbing them everything for 24 hours, nothing. Respect their time, find out as a leader, which person is flexible hours, which person is, a, which person is with the limited hours, which person is with the fixed hours. You need to collect all this data and that data we need to develop with the new culture and get the work done. That's important in, in this current situation of the way Omicron coming because by the, the, the way things are moving ahead in the pandemic, Mm -hmm. This will take some time in order to completely mm -hmm. get it clear off so that total lockdown is gone. So, uh, really, while you mentioned the humane aspect of uh, this entire hybrid work structure, HR departments are working over time to ensure that employee engagement and motivation is high. Plus, there are also various parameters to check for productivity. prepared in terms of technology to get a step back into the hybrid world where everybody works from home. It's not a mix of in-office and at-home work. Uh, have they moved a lot of their processes to the cloud, which offers them a lot of flexibility and scalability? Uh, do they have uh, good uh, security systems in place, especially enterprise-level security, when you know, the, there's so many entry points available and people are working from home? I, I wanted to know if you feel that companies are ready in these aspects. Uh, according to my uh, observation, uh, some of the companies are ready and they are not totally ready, but they are uh, slowly coming across to the new technologies. Now, these those companies who are adopting the new technologies, they have the budget, so they are trying. The other side is uh, the, the companies who doesn't have a budget, even they need to be secure. Now, when you talk about the security, I would like to address the, the fundamentals of the security. So even if the companies who are investing in the technologies, uh, let's say they are trying to adopt artificial intelligence, machine learning, but these technologies will work very far superior, provided the fundamentals of security as are taken. Now, uh, when I'm trying to say the fundamental security, like I'm trying to address the securities at the level of human being. Okay, the human beings who are using the application, whether it's in uh, a SAP or a ERP or a CRM, the end of the day, the decision is done by them. Now, if the human being is uh, by some means gets compromised because of the external threat, so the security is weak. So what is important is these employees, they need to be trained indirectly or directly. Directly, I would not uh, propose the things because when the AI and ML things are coming in place, why not to uh, adopt the AI-based and ML-based uh, interactive learning to the employees, uh, which is going to pop up during the work. When they're working, they're trying to use the workspace, any kind of workspace, which is a Google one, or it can be uh, a proprietary, which has been 
some of the XYZ technology. So they, they are going to open up the applications on the laptop. So what is important is that when they click any application, open any application, and uh, the, the normal failures which happens or the compromise which happens, that needs to be taken care by the technology, where the technology will inform that, hey, Sunil, are you doing the right decision before you click? That the window has to pop up, okay? So when the windows pop up, so this is basically giving an indirect, direct, uh, or a, an indirect indication that I should take some kind of a decision by play, by saying that whether it's a safe or un, unsafe. Now for these companies, or I would say uh, Google as well as uh, Google platform has already given the free tools. Adopt these free tools. Make your employees to use these free tools. Let them know. Give them a freedom, a freedom of workplace. Do not overload with them because this is a hybrid area or hybrid workforce. They are already being bundled with the uh, other kind of stress. They have rediscovered the connect to, uh, the new connect the, the family with the house. And uh, that way has added some kind of a different kind of fatigue within their mind. So by considering these facts, I would like to address in the first level security to be given as an interactive learning for all the cyber security threats. Mm -hmm. is the first step. The second comes when it is in the office, apply the same things. Try to give the interface in such a way that they're there. It is a user friendly for them. It is not going to stop them by doing their social work. So they're equally involved in the social work, doing something personal activity or trying to connect with the Facebook in parallel, trying to tweet to their social groups and trying to post the pictures. Do not be a stumbler or a blogger because that is going to add a stress factor. You need to find a new way of learning. Okay, and when you learn these things, talk to them. You'll find out a new level of challenges, and so try to address the challenges with the securities in place so by adopting some interactive learning. There are some companies available who can definitely have the licenses in place. They can give you the uh, some kind of trial offer for sixty days to ninety days. That will come to whether that's a fit to your culture or not. That's one. Second, when you come to the connectivity. Again, see, there are there are a lot of areas where IT team is getting increased day by day. So what's happening, according to me, is that the situation is moving from simplex to complex. The more and more it is getting complex, it's becoming difficult to manage. So earlier days, that traditionally, the people used to work from the office. Today, because of the pandemic, they're working virtually, work from home with a combination by using the collaboration tools. The additional challenge comes the vendors who are actually managing your systems. Now, these vendors, are they equally following the cyber securities you are having in place? It's, it's like, no. Why I'm saying no? Because you are developing, your IT team is developing some kind of a policy, some kind of a compliances, some kind of a restriction, some kind of a training, some kind of learnings. Now, with all these mechanisms, your vendors, they do not come in picture, but they have the access. And that access is getting connected to your system for managing. So what they're doing is that when they're managing, they're equally exposed to the threats. So you have that kind of level of threat which may come anytime to the system and uh, the, the bad actors can take the benefit of that. It is a lengthy talk. So I can give some, mm -hmm. uh, this is the smallest answer I can give in order to take care of the situation sure. and be more cyber secure. All right. Uh, you spoke about, you know, uh, training employees to be more uh, hands-on with uh, security protocols as well. What's your view on technologies like AR, VR, AI, analytics, and their usage in uh, companies and their processes these days? Has that, you know, increased? What kind of impact has it had on organizations? Well, AI in place it is going to enhance the process and uh, can do a lot of, lot of. Uh, simplification in terms of the process. So this is the one side. You're trying to improve the process on one side. Uh, the other side is like, I wanted to make alert the companies that they had to be secure also. If you look for a productivity, just don't look for an increase in productivity, but look for the security in place. And, and so once you have the AI and ML in place, you make sure your fundamentals of securities are taken care. You'll be more successful than what you're doing. All right. So keep an eye out on security. That's very important. And mm -hmm. uh, what about cloud and the usage of cloud? There's so many, you know, advantages to cloud, but then uh, there are a lot of risks and worries associated with cloud as well. 
what would be the challenges in cloud adoption and how would you look to overcome them? Cloud adoption is the one of the best things is that it's very easy, it's safe, secure. But when you increase the number of transactions in the process, uh, if you do not negotiate with the cloud providers properly, it may end up in terms of highly increase in the billings. And that increase in billings has to be equally supported with your business. Now, if your business is improving, uh, I'm sure any business leader will try to clear, try to adopt that kind of a billing cycle. Not only the billing cycle, but the amount which is coming for transactions directly. Because in the cloud, each and everything is correlated to the bill. Whether you go to Amazon or go to the private cloud or anything else, because they had invested, so they tried to put on the charge. So one has to really find out whether he has to adopt the services on hourly basis or a monthly basis, or he has to adopt it on a, some kind of a transaction basis. So based on that, all these factors, if he decides, he will get a, a right quality of billing and he will be able to survive. So this is one side is the billing. Uh, second part comes is that uh, when you put it onto the cloud, uh, the advantage is that you are connected anywhere, anytime, and it's an easy to connect. But apparently, you need to have a strong leader in terms of uh, making sure that uh, next to the fundamental security, the other aspects of security are taken care of with the help of a right firewall. And he needs to do the, uh, a proper a patch update, the security uh, alerts, then some kind of an um, uh, alerts and events management. He needs to constantly monitor because in this uh, world of insecurities or securities which is happening, the vulnerabilities are existing. We are really, as a human being, we don't have the patience and we need to have a rigorous monitoring, find out the vulnerability, patch the vulnerability, fix the vulnerability, and go ahead. So it's a continuous cycle. So you need to be very closely watching. So it has to be like you need to have few people, a set of leaders who really buy or take the ownership. That's where the loyalty of the company comes. So parallel to loyalty, the, the people should be set with the ownership. So there should be a small group of ownership who is going to do a cons consistent monitoring, observation, and make sure the cloud, which has been decided by the top uh, management, mm -hmm. has been equally taken care of in terms of security aspects. If you're secure, your cloud is best. All right. So uh, you spoke about employees being on social media during office hours, but, uh, you know, how can organizations embark on the social media for creating business value and, you know, be a channel for growth? See, I highlighted the social media in terms of uh, managing the employees. Why I'm mm -hmm. saying because the young, young employees, which is the majority of the percentage across every workforce, they are driven themselves by the social media. And they are so much driven by the social media that uh, it's like a need of the hour. If you just remove the mobile from them, they cannot, I mean, they will become too much patience less. They will be, they will feel too much of disturbed scenario. So they are connected. So we need to keep them connected. Keep them connected with their personal life parallel to the business life and make sure that the security is not compromised. That's where the key lies. And for your own company's growth, how can companies and organizations leverage social media? We have kept the transparent and openness. We are focusing on the productivity, security. We are not focusing on the timeliness of the person, whether he's working six hours or eight hours or 12 hours. We are giving that kind of freedom of workplace. But we are making them realize that end of the day or end of the week, they need to complete a task, get some productivity. I know it is it is the challenging time, but you 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 cannot just mix the traditional ways and start calculating that, okay, is a wastage of time or wastage of these, that. And again, you regenerate the new employees. Again, you have to go to the same cycle. So why don't you take the existing persons, try to retrain and get them into the proper shift. So you have to reshape the total organization. So when you find out a new way of culture, new reshaping of the business. Like, there's no way out. We have, to find, we have to go and find out a new culture. Yeah, but cultures take time to imbibe and, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Correct, yes, yes. Up, so long as the company figures it out and how to go about it, I'm sure they'll reach there in their given time. Now, as for you, what should be the top technologies that CIOs should focus on during 2022? First one, cybersecurity. 
Second one, I would say it should go to the RP, robotic process education. And third one, I would say, obviously, artificial intelligence. So these are the three things which is definitely going to drive the different areas of the world, will we'll solve most of the problems, will we'll bring the easiness of business, but equally we need to uh, train the manpower to adopt these things, make them utilize, and parallel make sure that they are secure and and definitely the, the process will, will help them to get some kind of a solution, a new way of doing the business, a new normal is going to come in place and we have to adopt, uh, institutionalize that particular activity and take it ahead. All right. So, Neil, thank you so much for speaking with us at TIOVA TV and sharing with us your thoughts, mm -hmm. your beliefs, your perspectives and all the expertise that you've brought in over your years of experience. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. We'll wrap it up here. And take okay. leave of everybody. Uh, but do remember, we'll be back with another chat right here on CIO TV to join us again. Thank you.